our city and said, no, we need an organized police force because he walked the streets with a guy named Jacob Reese when he became police commissioner. And he saw what the watchmen were doing. Now, you remember Jacob Reese. He was the one who was the photographer who pointed out how the poor and impoverished on the Lower East Side were living, mostly Jews at that time. And because of his photo display, things were done to undo the ghetto that existed down there. And Teddy Roosevelt learned from that experience and incorporated that into the NYPD. They don't spend enough time talking about Teddy Roosevelt. In fact, let's face it, we don't spend enough time talking about the NYPD of Lake Dewey. You know, before the pandemic, the NYPD, they were the heroes, right? You know, how many of them were sick? How many of them? No, you don't. No, 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 no. So wait, they're essential workers. Oh, no. John Stewart, remember, went to the hill, did a magnificent job for the survivors and those who had gotten so seriously ill. Afterwards, all of a sudden, Black Lives Matter, it's John Stewart, what police? I have no idea what you're talking about. They have sudden amnesia. They turn on their own friends. And I've seen this again and again and again. But let me give you some historical significance. Because the candidate I am is a lot different than your traditional candidates, either Democrats or Republicans. You cut my veins and arteries, I bleed New York City. I love the rendition that you had of God Bless America today. I was a tried and true Yankee fan. I hated the Mets and I still hate the Mets. <laughs> but I remember. And I even confronted Michael Baticic earlier today, Rudy Giuliani, because he comes on after me on the radio, and he was in the studio today. And I said, you know, your deputy mayor, Randy Levine, who's now vice president of operations for the New York Yankees, he was the first one of the cancel culture. Remember every seventh inning stretch, after 9-11, when Steinbrenner was alive, he said, I want the Kate Smith rendition every seventh inning stretch. You remember that? Nobody complained about that. There were no marches, there were no petition drives, and then all of a sudden, no more Kate Smith, God bless America. And we said nothing, right? Nobody protested, nobody said, hey, I'm canceling my season tickets that cost me a reverse mortgage in order to go to 161st River Avenue. Then we saw them take down Kate Smith's statue in front of the Philadelphia Spectrum. Nobody explained that. They said, oh, she's racist. And I said to myself, yeah, isn't this odd that this great patriotic figure, a, a woman who raised so much money in U.S. war bonds to support our effort against the Japanese and the Nazis, is now all of a sudden being put in storage. And do you know the only place that continues to honor Kate Smith is Wildwood, New Jersey. Every morning when they raise the flag there, they play the Kate Smith rendition. So I want to salute you, Vicki, for making sure that we had God Bless America. Because when I heard that, I thought of Kate Smith. We cannot forget. Remember, now they're coming after everybody. We said nothing when it came after Kate Smith. Yeah, you know, she's older. Maybe they're having a young, hip happening. No, 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 no. It was no more God Bless America, period. And now you see what's transpired. And look at our city, a beautiful New York City. We knew that Comrade de Blasio, the part-time mayor, the dope from Park Slope, who loves to smoke those fatties at night, that Maui Waui and Hindu Kush with his uh, wife on the back porch of Gracie Mansion, we knew he was in a drug-induced psychosis. But it became most apparent to me when all of a sudden, in the midst of all this mishigash, He's on the Brian Lair show, and he's quoting Marx and Engels and Das Kapital. Yep. Quoting it from memory. And I said, of course, here's a guy who went on his honeymoon behind the sugarcane curtain of Fidel and Raul Castro to Havana. Here's a guy who went and kissed the pinky ring of Daniel Ortega, who's still there, I might add, a dictator, in Nicaragua supporting the Sandinistas against Ronald Reagan's support of the countries. Of course, he's a hardcore communist, but people say, ah, people change. I am. That was Comrade de Blasio when he was younger. He's become uh, more mainstream. And so I decided, for a number of reasons, to grow a beard, because with a red beret, they think you go Chavez. So my opposition immediately thinks, oh, he's one of us. 
And then if you look at me from a certain angle with this beard, I look a little bit like Karl Marx, don't I? So when I'm battling all the acolytes of AOC, All Out Crazy, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Jumani the cop hating Williams, when they look at me initially, they don't know necessarily how to figure me out because I'm in the streets just like them. They've got no more street cred than Curtis Lee, and so they can't frighten me out, they can't chase me out, they can't harass me out. What are they gonna do? Kill me? Haven't enough people tried to do that already? That's interesting, some of you came up to me as I was uh, sitting in the back there and you said, oh, I, ju I just saw you, you know, in Fear City, you know, New York versus the mob, you know, Netflix. And there you were talking about when you were a kid taking on the Lucchese's and the Gambinos. Yeah. Because they grew up in Canarsie and that's all you had. Lucchese's on one side, Gambino's on the other side. And you either folded like a cheap camera and you wimped away. Or you stood up to them and you fought for what you knew was right. And I started doing it as a little kid. And I've taken many lickings and always come back ticking. And the reason I did it is because... Organized crime, look what they did to our city. It took somebody like my Kumbada Cheech, Rudy Giuliani, to give the city a desperately needed colonic. Not just to save the streets from the inept David Dinkins, who happens to be the mentor for Comrade de Blasio, but a man who took on the five heads of organized crime, the Gambinos, Genovese, Lucchese's, Columbo's, Bananos, unheard of, unprecedented, being an Italian-American, it earned him the the disgrazie of 10% of the Italian Americans who were never elected, never voted for him, even though he was running against David Dinkins, who was destroying our city single handedly at the time. 10% of the Italian Americans would never, never vote for Rudy Giuliani. Luckily, enough people decided to come out to vote the second time around against uh, David Dinkins. And a lot of people think, oh, it's all those Staten Island folks, you know, they, they wanted us to see. You couldn't have been more hopelessly wrong. When you actually look at the vote tallies, when you actually crunch the numbers, the reason that David Dinkins was not reelected, because he was ahead at a certain point at night, the figures came back from Southeast Queens, predominantly black, predominantly middle class, and they didn't come out to vote for the African-American first mayor of New York City, David Dinkins. Not to say they came out to vote for Rudy Giuliani. No, no, they didn't hold their nose and pull the lever. They just sat on their tuckers and didn't vote. Thank God they didn't. We ended up with Rudy Giuliani who saved our city from the abyss. And as you know, it was a long, hard